Hello and welcome to the April 2024 Saturday Sampler for Corn Wagon Quilt Company. As always, please like and subscribe to our channel. And I hope that you really love making these blocks this month. We will start out with some pretty Dresden plate blocks. Uh, this is a traditional pattern and one of the few that are pretty traditional. We're following a pretty traditional set of rules, but one of the things that makes it a little bit different is that it only has 16 blades. And part of that is because it's a very small block finished, but part of it is also just to give it a little bit of a chunkier look and a chunkier feel because this is not our grandmother's flower garden. And uh, I will show you some tips on how to make those Dresden blades. And also, if you have a little bit of a problem, I'll show you how to fix that as well. I am also including a foundation paper piecing pattern, which is just about my favorite part of this quilt. I ended up having a little more blank space in this quilt than I thought that I would. And so I went back and I put in some little bees and I think that you are gonna love making these bees. They end up so cute. There is a little uh, optional embroidery that you can do to make the stingers and that will be really fun. Now, my biggest tip this month and the one that I hope that everyone will follow is to make a copy of your templates before you start sewing because you may make a mistake. And if you make a mistake, you need that template to, to make another copy. And um, I know from experience that uh, it is too expensive for the corn wagon to provide a second copy of these instructions. So if you make a copy, then um, it's just a little bit of money to spend, but a lot of peace of mind in the end. So that's that. Lots of different people like lots of different mediums to foundation paper piece. You can always foundation paper piece on regular paper. Uh, if you do that, you do need to lower your stitch length. In the demonstration that I make, I'm actually using newsprint. And because I am using newsprint and it's a little easier to tear than regular copy paper, then I am not lowering my stitch length. But I do take a couple of opportunities to back stitch. Not on every seam, but um, definitely I do back stitch when I join the two pieces together. I don't believe that I mentioned that in my little tutorial. But um, another option is vellum. We do sell vellum at the corn wagon in small amounts for a really small fee. So if you wanted to try vellum, that's great too. The thing about vellum is that it perforates and it creases really, really nicely. And so you do need to lower your stitch length, but it tears away beautifully. So if you want that option, we do have that and you can try that out at the corn wagon. A couple of other little things. As I am cutting out, you will notice that I am using these scissors to cut out my paper templates. These are my paper scissors. I do not ever recommend using fabric scissors for paper. I have two sets. So this is my paper cutting scissors. Another is that when you're making your Dresdens, you will want to use a true quarter inch seam. If you use too small of a seam allowance, then uh, if you use a scant quarter inch seam, which is what we usually use, it will be a little bit distorted and puckery. If you use the true quarter inch seam, then you should be fine. If you would like to trim your templates to just inside, just barely inside the template, that will also help you if you want to keep using your scant quarter inch seam. But if you just move your needle position over one spot, you should be just fine. Uh, and then for the rest of the foundation paper piecing and et cetera, then you'll be just fine using your scant quarter inch seam. And you'll want to use that because then they'll come out to the right size. I do include uh, applique and foundation paper piecing instructions, but I will also include those online. And now I hope that you enjoy the rest of the tutorials and have a really fun time sewing this month. I think that you will really enjoy making these cute Dresden plates 
sunflowers, and the cute foundation paper piece bees. Have a great time. The first technique that I'm going to demonstrate is the sunflower applique circles templates. I am going to prepare this circle template and this half circle template. We'll start just with the circle template. And you can see I have this glass here. The glass happens to be the exact size of that same circle. So we'll just use this glass for our template. And as I prepare these templates, I like to use an old cereal box or a cracker box, anything that you like. Our family likes these multi-grain Cheerios. And then I like to use a pen of some kind. This just happens to be a felt tip pen. And so I'm just going to mark all the way around my glass. Now, if you mark around your glass and your marker, if you're using a marker or something, if it leaves any residue on your glass, you can usually get that off um, if you scrub it. So I don't worry too much about that. I'll just rough cut this out of the cereal box. And then as I make this circle, I'm going to be super careful as I'm cutting to cut it really, really precisely. I'm just going to cut as exactly on that line as I can. And after I'm finished, I'll flip it over and just make sure that I've done a good job because if you have any rough parts on your template, then you will have rough parts on your applique piece. And we want a perfect circle or as close to perfect as we can. So I'll just take my time here and cut this out. Okay, and then I'll just kind of feel around. I'll look on the other side and see there's like just a little bit of place. I think that looks good. Okay, so on that, I will just write also circle template. I like to write, um, not your grandmother's flower garden, sunflower. And then I know exactly what that template is if I ever make more of these or um, I'll put this in with my patterns as well so that I can use it again. Um, if I plan to throw it away, then I usually don't make that mark. But um, on this time, we can use it, we'll use it three times. And so you can still do it a couple more times. So then I'll take my black gingham fabric and I will just roughly cut. This doesn't have to be super precise, but about a quarter inch away. If you err, err on the side of it being just a little bit larger, that'll help you. Um, but I like to do about a quarter inch and I just hold it in place and the fabric in place with my left hand while I'm cutting with my right hand. I'll just cut around that template. All right. All right, now I've got my needle and thread. It's just a little piece of leftover thread. I was hoping that it would maybe show up on camera for you because it's bright orange and it's about 25 inches long. You can see I'm just taking some basting stitches. They're pretty big stitches and I'll just work my way around trying to stay within that seam allowance. And if it ruffles a little like that when I'm pulling it, that's totally okay. I find it's easiest if you leave just a little bit at the front and then pull it through as you go um, because then you can leave that tail nice and long and then it doesn't come out because it's really frustrating when it comes out. And just kind of evaluate, you may have to let your little tail on this end come out just a little bit um, because you don't want a double length of that thread. You just want a single so that it will go around all the way. Um, and so just kind of see, Ooh, just about lost my needle. But uh, you'll just go around. 
I'm taking probably like a quarter inch stitch and I just do a few and then pull it just a little bit so that I know that I'm still within that seam allowance. I don't wanna go close, so close to the edge that it goes under the edge because this is what's going to ruffle your fabric and pull it tight so that your circle is pretty near perfect. It's the best way that I've found to applique circles with this starch method. So we'll take this, getting to the front of it, and that's just about right. Okay. And I usually go really close to that first stitch, not quite over. You can see that it comes out right here and this one's coming out right here. So I'll come to that and then I'll take this needle and take the thread off of it and I'll put that back with my sewing kit. And then I kind of smooth it down so that it's flat again. Now this is where the starch comes with the starch method. We're going to use, I like to use this magic sizing. You can use faultless starch. It's a, the same brand, but just a different, like a heavy starch. You can use best press. You can use whatever you like. And I'll put a little in the cap right there. And then with a paintbrush, I'll just dab it in and I'll dab it right over here. And I'm not worrying too much if it gets the thread wet, it's fine. Um, but I'm getting it. I will say if you use a, a friction pen in the next step, that will go away. If you're using a marker of some kind, you wanna make sure that it's um, not going to leak onto your fabric when you iron it. So I know that mine is permanent and I'm just getting the starch in the seam allowance. You can see it's not really wet underneath the cardboard, just in the seam allowance. And it kind of does travel just a little bit, so you can see it's a little wet right there, but that's okay, that's not gonna be a problem. So then I'll take the tails and I will pull so that it gathers the whole thing, and I'll pull this end of the tail taut. And I've got my little mini iron. This is my little mini ironing board that I put on top of my rolling cart that I take places. And I will just take, and I like to start with that part because then I don't have to pull it the entire time. I like to pull it, like you don't have to pull it quite as tight the whole time. So I like to keep it pulled a little bit, but I like that part to be kind of in place. And then you just, whoops, you just go around and around your template until You've got your whole piece ironed. And then I like to flip it over and iron the front side too. And I do iron, I don't press. I just iron it real quick. And then you let that cool for a minute. Um, and you can take out your thread. You can reuse this thread a few times. So you can use it on all of your templates if you'd like. And then you don't waste any thread. If you want to throw it away, that's fine too. If it gets tangled when you're taking it out, that's fine too. And I'll just pull it to get it out because we've done basting stitches so it comes out really easily. Okay, I'll maybe repress that just one more time with the thread out. Just because it's looking a little bit like it wants to not remain in shape. And you kind of press that. Okay, let that cool. And then I'll take out the template. It just takes a minute or maybe a few seconds to cool it. And then I'll carefully press it again from the back side, and then from the front side as well. Because I like mine really nice and crispy. I think it makes such a difference. And as it's trying to curl up a little bit, I'll just iron it down and remind it that it wants to stay like that. Now, if you have a pressing board or a magazine or book or something to push on top of it, that works great as it's cooling down. But even if you don't, this is going to keep its shape. It's going to be super easy to applique. So that's great. And that is the starch method of applique. Now, 
for this half circle template, I am going to do the same thing. I will take my glass and I will mark a circle because I know that this circle and the half circle are both the same size. And then I will take my template and I will cut it out right on the line. Just like that. And I'll also cut just that straight edge, just like that. I want that straight edge at the top and the bottom to be really precise. And then I'll put this on and I'll mark the line right here, right here. And then I'll take a ruler, which I only have a big one right now. So I'll take the ruler and I'll put it on those two lines and mark that straight. Oops, got a little on my ironing board, that's okay. And then I'll rough cut that out. And actually before I cut out, just so that I remember, I'll X on the side that I won't do. And I'll roughly cut out And then again, I will really, really carefully cut this one out. This side doesn't matter quite as much, but we will use it later. And I should have marked my template again, but I'm just not going to this time in the interest of time. Now, on this part, you can see in your instructions that you have all the same size of um, squares for these, and this is just a half square, that's okay. I just wanted to make it really easy to cut out, but also to maneuver your circle. So if you wanna put it here so that it's going straight, that's great. I like to have my ginghams going on a diagonal, which you'll see later. And then this one, I will cut out a little bit bigger on that side as well as over here on the curved part, but I will not worry about gathering that side. So I'm just going to take my needle and I will gather just along this side. Now I've got my needle and thread. I just am using the same thread and I'll just start on one side of that half circle. And I'll do just that same basting stitch. It's a little tricky because the fabric is a little floppy and I cut it just a little bit big, but you'll see that it'll come out perfect. No problem. So as I'm holding this, I'm trying to be careful to keep it oriented the same way on that diagonal as close as I can, but it will, kind of be fiddle aroundable. So if you want to fiddle around with it in a little bit, if you do your basting stitches not quite next to the cardboard template, then you'll see that you can kind of fiddle around a little bit. And I will start, I start really close to the edge and then I end really close to the edge too. You can see, so, all right. Now I'll put it flat again and I'll take out my needle, put that in my sewing kit. And then this is the part where I wanna be pretty careful. So I'm trying to line up this straight edge pretty even with that diamond pattern. I still have a little bit of starch in here, so I'm just gonna dab my paintbrush again and you can see I do like three or four little swipes and then 
kind of go. The more you do this method, the more you know how your paintbrush will absorb and how much it will get on the cardboard and all of that. Okay, so now you're going to hold one end and the other end and just kind of hold them together like it's a little bonnet. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And I am bending the cardboard just a tiny bit, but it's just so that these will stay taut. And then as you press it, then it will stay down. Okay. And then I'll flip it over and do the front side. Swirl it around a couple of times because that feels right. And then I'll let that cool. And after it's cooled down just a little bit, I'll take out the thread. And I'll just give that a little repress from this side. I don't think I need to from the other side. That'll be all right. All right, after that's cooled down a little bit, take out the template. And then press it one more time without the template inside. I like to press that part and iron this part. <laughs> it's kind of a funny distinction, isn't it? All right, and that's that template. It's almost complete. So now I will take this template over to my cutting mat and I'll put the, the cardboard template on top and I'll either line up this line with a line on my mat or I will make a little mark with, like I have a, a pink friction pen that would show up pretty well in that white space. And um, so I would either do that friction pen right there or I would just line it up on the mat. That's probably what I'll do because that's the easiest. And then I'll cut right on that line. There is a quarter inch seam allowance on this side. And so that's how you will know that 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 will line up with the side of the, the block that we're making in just a minute for this half circle applique. But that's how I starch method applique. Um, we will go ahead and set these aside for now and get out our cutting mat. And then we will, I'll show you some cutting tips for our Dresdens. But these little guys are pretty cute, aren't they? Just wait till they're on. You'll love it. For the Dresdens, I have cut my two pieces into three inch strips. And I've done that for both sets. And I'm going to cut two at a time. So I'll just show you those two. Uh, you can see that I've still got my Dresden template, so I'm going to cut that and I'm going to be really, really precise when I cut this out. And I did include how many you should cut out of each, each color on the template, just so that you can make sure that you get plenty of those. I'm just going to shave off a little bit. If you wanted to use your rotary cutter and ruler. I do have a separate rotary cutter for paper that I really like to use just for the paper. And I'll be using that in the, in the foundation paper piecing tutorial that I'll do. But for this one, I'm just using my scissors because they were handy. Okay, so for the Dresden template, we're just going to line it up on the bottom and on the top. And like I said, I just have this super large <laughs> ruler, which makes it a little funny. For the first cut, I am going to cut on top of the template. You can see I shaved off just a little. So these are actually my paper, my paper cutting um, rotary cutter. And when I have an old rotary blade in my fabric ones, then I put it in my paper one so that I get a little more use out of it. As I move my template off, I have just a little bit left over. Now this side, I will just butt my ruler up against that side. 
And you can see it kind of stops by itself. And then I'll take off the template and cut. And you don't really need the lines on your mat, so that's why I've turned mine over. So now I have two perfect, cute little uh, Dresdens. Then I'll do the same thing this way. And you'll just angle your ruler. And if you hold it kind of on this side, this side goes up just slightly and then it will butt up against it. And you can use the same template for each set. See? And I'll just do that. You'll get four out of each length. And then um, you'll make eight pink that are light and eight pink that are dark. And you get to choose which one you think is which. It doesn't really matter as far as placement goes, as long as you're doing like every other one and they kind of naturally go in that order as you're cutting out. I'll make sure that that's lined up nicely. Whoop. Let's do that again. And then you can see there's just a little bit extra on the end. That's in case you needed to kind of reposition or if you get the mark just a little bit wrong. But not a lot of extra, but just a little. And then you kind of know that, okay, that was right. Four, four for that strip. Then I'll go ahead and do my other strips, just the same. They're all the same. They're the same width. And then they'll be the same. You'll get four from each width. You'll get eight light pink and eight dark pink, eight light yellow, eight dark yellow, eight light blue, eight dark blue, four dark orange and four light orange. So that is how you will cut those. And it's pretty simple. Now it's time for the fun part. We will take, this is a 10 inch square and I actually just cut it 10 inches on the sides and didn't worry about cutting down the top. And that's just fine. We're going to fold it in half and finger press it just a little bit to make sure that there's a little crease there. You can iron it too if you would like. And then I like to line up these because these sides, because I didn't cut them square, are not super square. And so I'll just line up this crease with that crease all the way to the edge because I know that these two edges are square. So, and then I'll finger press those to get that crease. And you can, you can see this one's a little bit darker because I did it second and then this one is also working great. Okay, and then I'll set that aside for a little bit later, but we will get to that. Okay, for my Dresdens, I have decided that this is my light color. And I will just take this Dresden and I will fold it in half. And I like to press it just a little bit and you'll see why in a minute. I'll just finger press that. And then I'll sew a quarter inch seam just along this top edge. I like to start on this open edge and backstitch just a little bit and then go off the edge. And I don't backstitch on the corner because that's where we're going to have the bulk of our fabric. So I'll show you, I'll do that and then show you what happens next. Okay, here you can see that I've got that seam. And next, what I will do is I will take off just a little bit of bulk because this part right here is going to curve or not curve, but it will when it's when it's turned, it will kind of point down and this will make a lot of bulk. So being careful not to go into that seam, I will just take a little kind of snip and it doesn't matter what angle you do it at. You just want to make sure that you're not crossing that line. Then I will take this and I'll kind of fold this so that it wants to lay open, kind of finger press it and then turn it. And my favorite turning tool that I use is just a mechanical pencil. The point comes pretty pointy and I'll just poke it in the corner just like that and gently, gently, gently because you don't want to go through. I'll poke it through. Now, you can see that it's kind of going off a little bit from this crease line. I hope you can see that. 
with the lighting. And so I will just make sure that that seam lines up with the crease line. And then I know that that is just about as square as it can be. And you can see that it becomes this cute little Dresden blade, just like in your pictures. So I will press this uh, just so that this is a nice crisp fold. And then what I like to do is I like to do all the Dresdens at once. So I will go ahead and do that for the eight light and the eight dark pink Dresdens. And then I'll come back and show you what's next. Now you can see that I've made 16 beautiful Dresden blades. I've already put one pair together. And like I said, I thought that this was the light side and this was the dark side. It's just because this is darker. You can choose if you like it the other way, you can choose it the other way, that's fine. But um, I've just put them together with the with one pair. So I'll just pair the rest of them up and I'll make sure that this top row I'll actually put that over there so that I, when I pick them up, I'll put them together like that. Now you can see that some of the Dresden blades are just a little bit different than the others. Like this one is a little bit square on top. This one is super pointy and this one is a little bit funny too, but that's okay because the way that I'm going to do these, I'm going to put them together exactly the same way each time. I will take a pair and I'll put the darker one on top. Like I said, I chose that one to be the dark one. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. And then I'll make sure that I'm lining up this straight edge and also this folded edge on both of those. And they line up really nicely and really evenly. I will actually start my seam about a quarter inch away from the edge, backstitch to the edge and then go ahead and go down. And that just makes it a little bit stronger right at that juncture. And so you can see that I've done that on this one. I've backed up and then gone forward. That's maybe a little less than a quarter inch, but that's okay, like it's approximate. And then and then when you, when you go ahead and press this part, it's easiest if you press them to the left. If you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, it's easier to press them to the right. And the reason why is because you, then you can hold this one and press with your iron this way to the left. It's just easier for your hands. And then same with your left hand. If you're left-handed, you'll wanna press to the right with your iron. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And so I'll go ahead and go make all the other pairs and then I'll get to the next little part. Here you can see that we have eight pretty little pairs of Dresdens. And now from here on out, we're just putting pairs or quarters or halves together. So we'll take the two Dresden pieces, these are the pairs, and we'll put them together just like, as though they were one piece. And I'll start a little ways away, backstitch, and then go down the seam, just the same exact way that I did with one pair and then they will become quarters, and then they'll become halves, and then you'll put the two halves together. I'll go ahead to that point, just for the sake of time, and then we will come back and I'll show you how to put it on your block. All right, now you can see that I have completed my Dresden block. Now, Remember how at the very beginning I said you need a true quarter inch for your Dresden block? I intentionally sewed it wrong so that I can show you how to fix that if you have a problem. So um, this block is sitting really, really flat and really, really nicely. But when I first ironed it, it was super puckery. Um, the center was coming up and it was not flat at all. So what I did was, um, I used a scant quarter inch seam on my Dresden blades. And when I did that, that meant that I wasn't taking enough of a bite out of those little blades. And because it's so small, you really have to have to do that. Um, and the way to fix that is you can see, I just took a second seam right here along my half lines. So I did it right there and right there. Um, 
when I sewed my halves together, I just did a little bit bigger. You can see it's just like almost a thread over, but that makes a difference. And then if it's still puckering a little bit, you can do your quarters just the same. So halves, quarters. If it's still puckering, I would go ahead and just re-sew. Now you don't have to pick anything apart because we're just uh, ironing it or pressing it to the left or, or all the way around and that's okay too. Another thing that you can do is just, because this is not appliqued yet, you can use a little starch or a little water to kind of shrink the fibers just a little bit, and that will also help that to lay flat. If you're still having problems, then you really maybe need to check your quarter inch seam because that's probably what's wrong. Okay, so now when I'm placing this down on my block, I want to make sure that all of my little quarter squares you can see that's just a little bit puckery there, but it will be just fine. But I want all of those edges to be really, really tight to that those creases that I made. And I will just grab some pins and I will pin those two blades that are around the crease in place. just like this. I like to use pins as I applique um, if I am appliquing by machine. If I am appliquing by hand, I like to use glue, but I will do this pinning method first because it doesn't cost anything to reposition a pin. So, okay. See how flat that and nice that is? Now, if I were going to go ahead with glue, I would just pick up these little pieces and glue just a little bit in the corners of each Dresden blade that is available and let that dry and then take out the pins and do those with the glue. Because I'm going to machine applique this, I'm going to leave those pins in and then I'll actually also pin all the way around but those ones are the most important because they are in those creases and we want them to be really, really square. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that later, but for the sake of time, I'm going to show you this part. So for this part, I will take my little quarter square triangle and you know I like it, the plaid to be kind of on the diagonal. So I'm going to fold it in half so that that diagonal is working for me. And I'm not super picky if it's like exactly on the diagonal, but I am creasing just these parts right here. And you can press it with an iron if you'd like. You can barely, barely see it. And because of that, I'm going to put a pin in right where my creases are. I redo that and just do it right in the crease so that it's super accurate. And that actually will help for the next step because I'm then going to fold it in half again the other way, making sure that those two pins that I pinned are really lining up nicely. And I'll just pin right in that crease, making sure I'm not getting any extra fabric on either side. And see how that's kind of jagging out just a little bit? Not even a problem because that's going to be hidden in the seam allowance. So I don't worry about that at all. Okay, now I've got my pins in place and you guessed it, I'm going to line up those pins on those creases and I guessed that pretty well, didn't I? Okay, that one just needs to go a little bit to the side. Okay, and those are all good. So then because I'm machine appliquing, then I will do a couple of pins in each quadrant, just like this. And then after I get that pinned all around, then I'll take out the pins that are holding those creases and I'll do that. And then I will go ahead and I'm, I'm just going to top stitch a little way away from here. You could definitely applique this by hand. That is no problem. Um, and then once I'm finished appliquing, 
I'm just going to do that the same thing with this. I may do a blanket stitch just because I think it's really pretty um, to have a blanket stitch in the center. But once I'm finished with that, I'm going to press it again, but I'm going to be very careful not to use any steam or any starch because if you do that, your applique stitches will kind of pucker your fabric and it's sort of ruined. So. Once you've appliqued, please make sure that you do not use any starch or water of any kind. Okay, and then I will go ahead and put that all together and then just trim it to an eight and a half inch square. And that's the end of that one. There are a few differences with the orange Dresden. You can see it's only a half Dresden. You've got a half circle and you've got a piece of fabric that's about half size. That's a little bigger than half size actually, just for ease of use. You'll just finger press that in half vertically. The, the crease will be going horizontally, but you'll fold it in half vertically so that that is your center line. And then the only thing that you're really lining up is that, cre uh, that seam right there on the crease. And so you'll do that. And then you'll also line up these in the seam allowance. Now, because I used that scant quarter inch, I'm going to have a little go off right there, but I'm going to make sure that this corner right here is in the corner. So you can see that that's pretty close to the corner. So I'll just do that. And then I'll go ahead and pin my Dresden blades just like on my pink one. Oh, and I should have done these, but I'm gonna do them now. So that's fine. That's the thing about quilting. You can usually go back unless you cut something, right? And then remember that the quarter inch is already built into that seam allowance. So the only real measurement that I need is for this crease to line up with the crease. So I'll just line that up and then I'll put this flush with the edge of the block. And I'll pin those. And I'm a little bit guesstimating with that, but that, that is where the edge of the block actually is. All right. I'll go ahead and just pin these also. I like to pin them both just because I like to see what it looks like when it's going to be all put together. And I just think it's so pretty. So next I will go ahead and I will top stitch right here blanket stitch right here. When I get to the end, I'll start up here and go just because that's, I like to have my, the corner of my presser foot right with the corner of my presser foot on that side. And so I'll sew all around. When I get to this point, I will sew straight up so that that side is tacked down. And then when I trim my block, first I'll trim off these little dog ears. They're kind of like dog ears. And then I will trim this part just to the four and a half inch mark, and then the top and the bottom to the eight and a half inch mark because that's how big that piece is. And that's it for Dresden's. Now we're on to foundation paper piecing, and it is actually my favorite method for doing really tiny, really fussy, and really strange angles. I really like it for these little bees because you can see we've got a funny little angle right here and I didn't want to have you do half, half rectangle triangles when we didn't need a seam right here and we didn't need it to, we needed it to be very, very small. So 
I think that this is a perfect thing to start you off if you have never done foundation paper piecing because you can see there's a lot of straight lines this month so you're going to get a lot of practice in but also you get to do some really fiddly stuff that's going to work out really really nicely. So we're going to start with uh, the left facing B and I have number two here. It doesn't matter which left facing B you use. They're the same exact pattern for the left two left facing Bs. So I'm doing number two and number two. Um, the only reason why it makes a difference is because of the later construction. So you'll see that in just a minute. But first things first, I really like to use a piece of leftover cardboard and I will put that in between a one and a two in on that line right there and I will just fold that back and press it really good really good really straight um, it's a little bit off if you can see that little I don't know if you can see it but I can see that it's a little bit off and so next time I will put it a little bit closer, but that's good enough. Maybe you can see it better from the back. You can see that crease really nicely. So we're going to use that as our guide point. And we're going to go get A1, which is the light blue B fabric, and A2, which is um, a background piece. Okay, now you can see that one is a square and one is a triangle. But what we're going to do is we're going to put those together, right sides together. Because they're solids, they're really easy because it, they don't really have a right side and a wrong side. And I'll just kind of center that uh, triangle piece as well as I can. And then this is the part that people have a hard time with and the reason why we make some extra copies of this. Because um, what you're going to do is you're going to put this A2 piece, or A1 piece, sorry, this this very first piece that we're going to put together, we're putting it face up to us on the back side of the pattern. And you can see the crease right here. I'm, I can see through and I can see where the line is. And I'm just going to put it a quarter of an inch up from the line, making sure that it is overlapping at least a quarter inch on all the sides. Now, if you're having a hard time, you can put this up to a window, up to the light, um, or on a light box, and you can kind of see through a little bit better. You just wanna make sure that those background lines are showing through. Another thing you can do is you can take the back of a piece of paper, and it makes it a little bit easier to see those background lines. Probably not on camera, but in real life, you'll be able to see. And then I'll just carefully, carefully take those over. If you want to put a pin in, I really recommend putting the pin in from the front side because then you'll know exactly where you're going. And because I'm sewing on this line, then I will put the pin in right there. Now I can see that that's shifted a little, so I'm going to put it down a little bit, just a little, so that I get that quarter inch on that side. This is the trickiest part of all of it. And because I'm more comfortable not pinning, then I will just take this straight to my machine. I will start a quarter of an inch ish before this and a quarter of it. And I will just go all the way off because that's the seam allowance right there. This uh, rectangle outside is the seam allowance. And you want to make sure that you're going off the seam allowance because then when we trim it, then we'll trim to the seam allowance. And I'll show you that later, but, but we'll go all the way off right there and just start a quarter of an inch before there. I'll go and do that and then come back and show you the next step. Okay, now I have sewn right on the line, started a little bit before that line and then ended over there. Now I'm going to press this towards the A2 piece, which is really the only free piece. Like this one is kind of tight to the, to the paper. And so this one will just open up just like this. I'll finger press it and then I will actually press it with my iron. And I'll do that and then come back and show you. 
you can see that that first seam was between A1 and A2. Now the next seam is between A2 or A1 actually and A3. So we're just going in number order. Now the easiest way to do this is to actually perforate the paper just a little bit until you get um, just barely past that line that we're going to be folding. We'll take our leftover bit of cardboard or cardstock works great. A bookmark is my favorite thing to use actually because they tend to be a little bit thin. Anything that's laminated also works. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to move my paper because I don't need that anymore. And then I like to use my paper cutting scissors for this entire step just in case I do any uh, trimming into the paper, but, but you can see we've folded it back so we should be fine. I will take my ruler and I will just line up the ruler along that creased line on the quarter inch mark. You can see that that's the quarter inch mark and that's a half inch mark. So I've lined up really nicely on the quarter inch mark. I'll trim it. And then that little part is waste. Okay, then you can see the A3 section is just a little bit bigger than the A2. Um, you can see that that's only a little bit. And that's why we label so, so carefully because then we know that we're getting the A3 section in the right place. So because we've cut that at a quarter inch mark, it's really easy now to line up. We can just line up just like this. Um, we can see that it's going off on both sides from that line. And because this is, this line will go off into the seam allowance on both sides, I'll just start and I will mark, I will line up my presser foot with this edge. And then I should come out right on that edge on the other side, which that's kind of a nice, kind of a nice feature. So I'll go ahead and do that and press it towards the A3. You'll see that's the easiest way to press it is just towards that one. And then I'll come back and show you the next part. Okay, and I've sewn on the line starting in the seam allowance outside of the seam allowance really, and then ending outside of the seam allowance. I did come off right at that angle. It worked out perfectly. You can see that I've got some little threads. I'm not gonna worry about trimming those because they're eventually going to be cut off with the seam allowance. But now I will fold this back. Now you can see it doesn't fold back between, oh, just kidding. I'm going to start with the A4 part. Um, so because it won't fold back, because that line is uh, sewn right there, I will just perforate that really easily by putting my thumb down and just kind of pulling just really gently apart from that part. And then, oh, I got a little snag there. Now it's just barely, barely, like it's within the stitch, I think, of that fold, but it will fold nicely. So I'll go ahead and fold it. Back, really, really straight. Use my ruler, my gigantic ruler, it's so silly. It's way easier if you have a smaller ruler and cut off that quarter inch. So that's, I'm just basically making my seam allowance here. So I'll go get my A4 piece and put it on. And you can see that things are lining up it's a little bit smaller than the outside of here, but it's well beyond that seam allowance line, so we'll be just fine. Now I've got my A4 piece. The way that I'm going to lay it out, if you're having trouble figuring out how to lay out your piece, you look on this side and you can see it through the paper just a little bit. Um, and I'll lay it out just like it's two pieces that are going to be joined and then flip it back just like that and then I know that that's going to end up right and I'm just going to finagle that just a little bit because I can see that the point is right here so I want that point those points to kind of be in line with each other just because it ends up 
a little bit better that way. And then again, this one will start outside of that seam allowance and outside. So I'll just start with my presser foot along this edge and then I'll go along. If you are just a tiny bit off, it's not that big of a deal because you're going to be trimming it to size anyway, but it will help to have a lot of these in the right places because they do line up with um, pieces underneath on this block. So just do your best. Uh, you can unpick, but it's kind of harder to unpick when you're paper piecing. That's the other reason why we make so many copies, just in case. You can usually reuse your pieces if you've made a mistake and line it up, but um, it's a lot easier to just do it right the first time, which takes a little practice, but you can do it. Um, so go ahead and sew on that line and then I'll come back and show you this A5 piece. Okay, now you can see that I have this cute little wing. It's a little bit funny. You don't really see exactly, but it's starting to take shape. So um, as I'm folding this one back, I can see that it's going to have a problem with the seam. So I'll just tear that just a little bit. That actually helps you in the end because then those tricky parts are already torn. And then you can see that I'm doing a straight line. I'm going to fold that part back. I won't worry about this bottom little part. You can see that that bottom little part is still sticking out because it's less than a quarter of an inch of overlap. So I really won't worry about it. And it's probably kind of hard to tell with the background fabric and the uh, gray newsprint that I use, but I, that is lined up. Now this part, you can see, I've got that quarter inch seam allowance cut and everything. This part of the pattern is the easiest because it's just straight lines up and down. And then this one doesn't even under, intersect at all. So that's kind of nice. You'll flip it over, you'll put on the A5 piece, which is that blue piece. And you can see that it's well over the seam allowance there. So we'll go ahead and sew that and then go on to A6, sew that, press it, and then we'll go on to the trimming and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. All right, now we've got everything made. You can see that it's starting to really look cute. We'll just go ahead and put that with the template face up and then we'll put our ruler with the quarter inch line right on that quarter inch line. Trim, rotate, and trim. If you have a rotating mat, that's great for this because then you don't have to pick up your template each time. But because it's on the paper, it doesn't actually move around. So it's okay to like manhandle it a little bit. You'll notice that I'm closing my blade every time that I put my rotary cutter down. It's because I had a friend who did that every time and it really helped. Okay, so now we've got this part of our B finished, trimmed. This little part is tall and this part is short, but you can see that that's going to be a quarter inch seam allowance right there and we'll take care of that in the next step. Um, or in a, in a further step actually, because the next step is to make this cute little bee. Now, we're going to do the same thing and I will just show you step by step each little piece that I do. Um, I will go ahead and do B1 and B2 just like I did before. The B1 piece is black and the B2 piece is a background piece. And it will feel pretty big because, I'll just show you. Um, it will feel pretty big because it's gotta overlap, but we will trim it down to the right size. So don't be concerned about that. So I'll go get the B1 piece and the B2 piece, and then you'll see kind of how it comes together. All right, so this is the B1 piece and this is B2. And we will go ahead and just put this part on. Now I am going to overlap it a little bit bigger 
Remember that quarter inch, and I am going to actually pin this in place, and I'm going to pin it from the bottom. I almost did it from the side, but then I realized my ruler was gonna run into it a little bit. Now I'm going to fold it back as though it's sewn and trim off that quarter inch seam. And I'm kind of rocking on that pin head, but I'm just going to slowly and carefully trim that off. And then you can see exactly where you need to place that B2 piece, just like that, just in line. And having it hanging off both sides means that it's gonna be perfect. So I'll go sew that and then come show the next. All right, now you can see that I started off the seam allowance on both of those. I can remove the pin because now it is sewn and then I'll just press this back towards that B2 piece and you can see that it will overlap just like that. Next, I will crease that B3 piece and you can see that it intersects that seam. So I will pull back that seam from right there. Now, I'm being very careful because if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose this little piece right here and I need that for the corner when I'm trimming. So I'm going to just barely, barely do it to that um, finished edge line right there, just so that I don't lose that piece. And then I'll just fold this back with my cardboard template. And that other piece, I'm just folding out out of the way. Trim. And then I'll put my B3 piece. You can see it says a little B3 there, so I'll put my B3 piece just there on the back. Sew it, press it, and be back for the next. Now you can see the cute little pointy B face. That's what that's going to be, is the face part. And it will get cut off so that it's a little more rounded in a later step, but for right now it looks pointy and that's okay. Uh, we will, like I said, we'll take care of that later. Okay, now I'll just flip it upside down because this is a little bit easier to do from this side. You can see that those seams are gonna get in the way. So I'm just gonna fold them back just a little bit, but because they're less than a quarter of an inch, um, away from that straight line. I don't have to fold back those top parts at all because that's gonna be fine. And remember that we placed this one about a quarter inch away. So there really shouldn't be a ton to trim off of that one, but we will trim off those dog ears at this point. So just on that quarter inch line again. And you can see this next part will just be one after another of straight pieces and then we'll do this part together at the end. And we're just rotating black, yellow, black, yellow, black. And it's gonna be so cute, you're gonna love it. It's starting to look a little bit bee-like. Okay, now I can tell already that I will kind of run into that just a little bit, so I'll just Tear it just a little bit down. And actually, while I'm here, I'm just gonna do the other side too because I like to go as fast as I can. I'll start with B8, fold, trim. Are you getting tired of it yet? I don't because I can see it coming to shape as I'm doing it, so I think it's fun. And then I'll take my B8 piece. Now, again, this is a little bit bigger of a piece than these little guys because we're on a steeper angle. So it needed to be a little bit bigger. So we'll just do that. And this time I'm trying to make sure that I have about that much that far away. So I'm gonna move that over just a tiny bit because I need a little more on that side than I do on this side just because of the angle. And that's something that you just kind of pick up with time, but I'm telling you so that you don't have to pick it up in time. So I'll go ahead and I'll start outside of the seam allowances and go ahead and sew that seam. 
Okay, you can see I've already, I got excited. So I already tore this piece. I'm just gonna fold it a little bit out of the way. And then I'll make sure that this actual seam I'm folding, seam line, I should say, I'm folding. And then I'll put my ruler on the quarter inch line. Flip it over, get B9 because that's the letter that we're on, letter and number. And then I'll just offset it just a little bit so that this side is bigger on this bigger side than on this smaller side. And then I'll go so and that will be just about finished with this block. Okay, now we have our cute little B. He's a little bit funny because he's got this angle here and this angle that's just slightly different there. Um, that will all work out because we've paper pieced it. It will be perfect and you don't have to keep those sides straight. And I'll show you how you don't have to keep those sides straight in just a minute, but we'll go ahead and put the ruler on those finishing lines. And you can tell that they're the finishing lines because there's no other lines around. Like there's just a rectangle around the whole thing. So we'll put the quarter inch line on those finishing lines and just trim until we have this cute little teeny weeny tiny one and a half by three inch little block. That's so cute. So you can see this one goes all the way to the point and this one goes to the quarter inch seam allowance. And this is how you know how to put them together. So you can see that I haven't taken off my paper at all. I've tried to keep it as intact as possible. And so I'll take this and flip it just from right to left so that I know that that's the top way and right to left so that I know that that's the top way. So this little guy goes down with this little guy. And because of the way that we did it, these two seams will nest with these two seams, which makes it really easy to line up those. And it may seem funny to pin through paper, but I am going to pin it right along those seams, just as though I was pinning a regular project. So now I will go ahead and sew right here along this bottom edge of the wings. And if you need to, you can kind of peek inside and see that those are the, that's the seam line that needs to happen. If it was upside down, then you wouldn't see this little corner of this wing. And that's what we want to see in that part is that corner of that wing. So we'll go ahead and sew those together and then I'll show you how to remove the papers. Okay. Now you can see that I've sewn and it's a little bit off right there, but that's not enough to make me too, too worried. And so I'm going to remove all the papers from this little guy. And this is why I love newsprint so much because you kind of just fold it back. I'm even getting this little triangle piece right here. You sort of just fold it back. And sometimes if you crease it with your finger a little bit, then that helps to, to make it tear even easier. And then you just tear along and it takes a little bit of time, not too much, but then you've got this cute little perfect block afterwards. I usually go kind of in the order that I sewed it. So that was a six, this is a five. That kind of can help too sometimes. So I'll do a four next. Now, the grand reveal. This is your B block. It looks a little funny. It's a little off centered because it doesn't have those seams finished yet. And this looks like a really long wing and that's a short wing, but don't worry. We're going to press this. And I believe I said to press it open. Yes, press it open after you remove the papers and it's easier to do it after you remove the papers and we'll just kind of finger press it and then press it open. 
I like this open just because there's so much bulk from all of those seams, you can see. And so I'll do that and then bring it back. And now it is time to assemble our cute little bee. I know that I used template number two, but because the left facing bees are both the same, I'm going to do the instructions for left facing bee number one, and you'll see kind of how that goes. So this is AA, this is BB, and this is CC. And I like to lay it all out just so that I don't mix up my placement. So I'll just go ahead and sew this bee to AA, just like a normal block because it is now a normal block. All right, and now I'll do BB to the left side and CC to the right side. You'll notice in B number two, it's slightly different, but the same pieces. So the left facing Bs should be the exact same size when they're finished. And this is where the magic happens because this little part is gonna get rounded off and you'll see how it looks even more like a B. And here is our finished little B block. You can see that this part will be more symmetrical once it's sewn in, but that is how he looks. He has just a little bit of rounding on the front and then a little pointy tail. So if you would like to, you could embroider a little tail right here. I probably will because I think that that would be darling to do a little stinger. I called it a tail, but it's really a stinger, right? Because they're bees and they need to protect themselves sometimes and the hive. So that is our finished little block. You will notice on your templates that the right facing bee has three different pieces. You will put the top and the bottom together, but the face will be by itself and it will attach to some other pieces as indicated in the pattern. And that is for ease of assembling at the very end. And you will kind of figure out why it's that way at, at a later date. And so that's it. I hope that you really enjoy foundation paper piecing these. I will be putting on some applique and some foundation paper piecing tutorials that I really love um, in addition to this. So if you're feeling a little lost, go ahead and go watch some of those. Some of them have different methods of starting out. They'll use a glue stick or they'll use Maybe they'll use um, some, some other methods of starting, but I like my method because that's what works for me. And I hope that you really enjoy making these blocks this month. Once again, please like and subscribe and we will see you next month.